We're so glad that you're here. We have some announcements for you. Church family, we just want to let you know that on Monday, tomorrow, the offices will be closed due to Easter and the Easter weekend. Young at Heart, we're excited because there's a new Bible study getting ready to start on Thursday, April 11th at 11 a.m. at Margaret Shelter's house. Church family, we're so excited because just in two weeks, we have an outreach that's happening on Friday, April 12th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. And that's for the lost and the vine lost. We're going to be serving dinner and checking blood pressures. We will also have face painting for the kids and games. So we encourage you, go out to the foyer and get signed up. Water baptisms on April 28th. Come on. You want to take the next step with Christ. This is it right here. So we encourage you, if you haven't been baptized, if you're thinking about it, come on. This is for you because God has something special that's going to take place during this water baptism, and we want to be a part of that. So make sure, get signed up, water baptisms, April 28th. We believe church is so much more than just a Sunday service, and we believe there's a perfect place for you here at Victory. There are four ways to give. You can text to give, you can give with the ushers at the back, or at the black box in the foyer, or you can give online through our church app or our website. We believe God has something unique to say to you. And our hope is that you feel his love stronger today than ever before. Thanks for joining. And enjoy the rest of the service. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Turn my mic up a little bit, hot title. Listen, church, we are here to celebrate the risen king. Amen. We're not here to celebrate your neighbor. We're not here to celebrate the, the, the people that are leading us into worship. We're here to celebrate the Lord, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you're a guest in the house, I am Pastor Joel, and we welcome you to worship this morning with us. With us, we welcome those that are watching online. And just a couple things. If you are a guest for the very first time, if you can text Victory Guest to the number on the screen, we will appreciate that. Amen. Also, if you notice in the lobby, there's a nice display that says, He is risen. We want to encourage you to take pictures with your family. Amen. Or if you're here by yourself, take a picture of yourself. And this is what I want you to do. Hashtag Victory Easter. Hashtag Victory Easter, okay? So we all can see your pictures on social media. So if you put it on X, Instagram, Facebook, we get to see those beautiful faces of yours. Amen. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, Father. And we thank you, Lord God, that we celebrate a risen Savior, Lord God. That tomb is empty, and we celebrate that today. So, Father, we pray, have your way in this house. We thank you, Lord God, for the families that are represented in this house. And, Father, we give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise. Somebody in this house, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Come on, he inhabits the praise of his people.
Your name, your name. 
tell you today that we serve a risen Savior. Not one that's still in the tomb, but one that is risen today and very much alive. Ah, that song we just sang before this, that's an awesome song, by the way. It says, wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy. He is merciful and powerful. Who are we talking about? Who are we talking about? He's my king. I said he's my king. I don't care what kind of demonic agenda the White House is trying to call today. This is still about my risen Savior, the King of Kings, and it forever will be. Can I tell you that his rule and his reign will be forever. He will have the last say. Amen. Amen. Let's give him some praise real quick. Can we do that, Father? We thank you in this house this morning. We thank you that you died on a cross for us. But we thank you that you're risen this morning and that you're alive and that you're glorious and that you're powerful and that you're merciful this morning. We glorify you in this house and everybody in this place this morning says, Amen, Amen, Amen. If you would this morning, well, first of all, I'm the associate pastor here in Rodney Bear and I want to welcome you all here this morning. If you're a guest here this morning, I have to give you a warning. We want you to come back, but when you come back again, we're going to call you family. So come back and see us again. But this morning, if you would, turn around and give somebody a high five, give somebody a hug, introduce yourself to someone this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans from around the world, welcome to the most anticipated event in the history of eternity. Prepare yourselves for a clash of biblical proportions, a titanic struggle that transcends mere mortal combat. In this corner, a figure shrouded in darkness, draped in darkness, and fueled by centuries of temptation, deceit, and rebellion, we present the challenger of all challengers, the being that for eternity has thought of himself as a worthy opponent, the infernal titan himself, if that's what you want to call him, Satan. And in the opposite corner, draped in robes of purest white, exuding an aura of divine authority and an unmatched legacy of redemption, 
We have the embodiment of love, compassion, salvation, none other than the undefeated champion of humanity. We have the heavyweight champion of salvation, the King of Kings, the man who turned water into wine and sinners into saints. He's walked on water and now he's stepping into the ring. We have the one and only, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. God of Jacob, great I am, King of angels, Son of man, voice of many waters, song of heaven's throne, louder than the thunder, make your glory known. Now, folks, let's take a moment to appreciate the unique setting for this monumental match. We're not just in any old boxing ring. Oh, no. We're in the heavenly ring. That's right, folks. This is a showdown that's out of this world. So buckle up and get ready for a battle that's sure to be talked about for eternity. Will good triumph over evil or will the dark side prevail? The stage is set. The fighters are prepared, and the fate of existence hangs in the balance. Are you ready to witness history in the making? Then let's not delay any further. Let's get ready to rumble! There's a fight right around the corner just waiting for you. And you better learn how to fight. You got to get up every morning fighting, clawing, scratching. You got to beat depression. You got to beat anxiety. You got to beat the naysayers. You got to beat that little voice in your head that's telling you you're not good enough. When I think about fighting, I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about situations. I'm talking about circumstances. I'm talking about opportunities that sometimes you have to fight for. Come on life, let's fight, let's go. Come on job, let's go. Come on career, let's go. I'm gonna go to war, but to win fights, you gotta have stamina. You gotta be ready to fight and bounce back. Punch and counter punch, jab and jab back. Let me tell you something, life is a series of fights. The worst thing you can do is run away from your fights. Because if life is a series of fights and you run away, you just ran away from your life. We gotta fight, we gotta fight. We can't lay down. When you lay down, you get ran over. When you about to fight, you know a fight's coming, your adrenaline begins to pump, your heart begins to race, your mind gets right and say, look, I'm not gonna just fight, I'm gonna win this battle or you going down. You better not feel sorry for yourself. You better not lay down and quit. You better get up and fight. Because a happy spirit does a body good like medicine. Fighting for your future. Fighting for your dreams. When you come over depression, you raise your arms like a champ. When you overcome bankruptcy, you raise your arms like a champ. When you come over divorce, raise your arms in victory. We gotta get up, baby. When you get sucker punched, get up. When you get hit in the gut, get up. Because if you wanna win this war, you gotta learn how to fight one battle at a time, one war at a time. Because you might not win every fight, but you gotta win the war. You gotta have the right attitude, the right mindset, the right mentality, not just the fight. It's gonna be a war, and you don't quit until you win. It's gonna be a war. And don't you quit.
Don't you quit. You're in a fight. Amen. You know what? The one already went to battle for you. Amen. You know, your job is a lot easier than what he went through. And sometimes the fight that we're fighting, we think that nobody else is fighting. And Jesus, where is he at in the midst of your fight? There is a fight between good and evil, church. I want you to understand that this morning. A fight between Jesus and Satan. A fight that you may not see in the natural world, but a fight that's happening in the supernatural. A fight that can have repercussions if you, don't, if you quit. If you quit, you give the enemy a foothold. It's a fight that is supernatural. As a matter of fact, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Thousands of years ago, Jesus went to the depths of the earth to get a hold of the keys from the enemy. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, says, I am the living one. I died, but look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and the grave. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. You got to get more excited that on the day that we are celebrating, it's not just Easter. It is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, church. Keys are a symbol of control. Amen. Keys keep people out. Or keep people in. If they do not have a key to a lock, they cannot enter or exit. Keys grant the holder access to the interiors and their contents. And in ancient times, the wearing of, of large keys was a mark of status in the community. I remember when I was in elementary school, middle school for that matter, and I remember the janitor. And the janitor always had about a four-inch, five-inch key ring. And those keys went full circle. And you know when he was coming down the hallway because all the keys jingled. You know that a janitor was coming. He is the one that has full access to the building. He has full access to every door. He has the keys to, to, to areas that no one else has. Listen, can I tell you that today that the enemy, Satan, devil, wants access to every part of your life. He wants access to your marriage. He wants access to your children. He wants access to everything of your life. He wants access of your workplace. He wants access to the church. Come on now. He wants those keys. In the New Testament, the word Hades has a twofold usage. In some cases, it denotes the place of all departed dead. The grave, as it's described in Acts chapter 2. In others, it refers to the place of the, the departed, the, the wicked. You know that place as hell. When Jesus was crucified on the cross, Satan thought he won. Satan thought that he won because they put Jesus not only on the cross, but they put him in a borrowed tomb. And day one, he was celebrating Day two, he was celebrating, but something happened on Sunday morning, on day three, when the stone began to roll away, amen, and there's, there's something about when he began to stretch his arms wide open and began a big yawn, amen, and says, oh, it's not done, devil. It's not done. It's not done. You know what? They found the empty tomb. They found the burial cloths, but Jesus walked out of that grave. He met Mary. He met the disciples. As a matter of fact, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that over 500 men and women saw Jesus, the resurrected Jesus. Amen. Since Christ alone has conquered death and himself came out of that grave, 
He alone can determine who will enter death and Hades and who will come out. He holds the keys. He has the authority over death and the place of the death. He has the authority to welcome those into his arms, those that, that, that are written in the book of life, those who committed their lives to Christ, those who opened their hearts to the Savior and invite Jesus into their lives. Jesus holds those keys today, and those keys are available to every single one of us this morning. I want you to get that in your, in your head this morning. He wants to relinquish some copies of his keys. Amen. Listen, even though Satan lost the battle, when Jesus rose from the grave, he knows his days are numbered. He knows that his days are short. Amen. And he will do anything to cause you to question the keys that you possess. Listen. Jesus holds those keys, and those keys are accessible to us. You know, you need to know that the enemy is the same enemy that went after Jesus. We know his playbook. His playbook has not changed after thousands of years. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy every single one of us. He wants to. He desires that. The enemy knows you have access to those keys. He knows that he, you have been given the possession of those keys. So he's going to try to make, it, make you believe that those keys are not obtainable. Listen, so what are those keys that Satan wants to get a hold of and doesn't want you to get a hold of? Those keys cannot be surrendered. Let me tell you again. Those keys that you were given cannot be surrendered. They should not be surrendered. Those keys are worth fighting for. And let Jesus go before you. You have to fight to hold on to those keys. There are many keys, but I want to focus on four keys this morning. The, the first key that I want you to get a hold of is the key of hope. It's the key of hope. What is hope? Hope is, is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Jesus' death and resurrection gives us hope. Yeah. Amen. Amen. My God's son is not in that tomb anymore. And because that tomb is empty, it gives me hope. Yeah. It gives me hope, church. No matter what comes at me, I have hope in the Lord. Listen, when Jesus died on the cross, it seemed that all hope was lost. Something happened three days later. Mm. Everything changed on that Sunday morning. Jesus, our hope, when we face those hopeless days and the hopeless moments, the enemy wants to destroy your hope. If there's any time like to present that the enemy wants to destroy your hope. And the enemy will use men and women around you to destroy your hope. And there are men and women that are being puppets, can I say puppets, trying to destroy you, your hope. It could be family members, it could be co-workers, it could be the government, it could be anybody that the enemy wants to use to destroy your hope this morning. We're living in days where men and women are walking around hopeless. They lost that key. And we as believers, we have the key of hope. In Romans chapter 15, verse 13, it says, May the God of hope fill you. Hmm. Somebody say fill. fill. Look at your neighbor and say fill you. Fill. Listen, may the God of hope fill you with all the joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Come on, say it like you mean it. Hope. Hope. Listen, hope is the gateway of joy and peace. When you have hope, there's a smile on your face that, yeah, I could do this. When there's hope, there's a, a peaceful resolution. See, the hope is found in Jesus and Jesus alone. 
And knowing that that tomb is empty on the Sunday morning, amen, gives us a lot of hope. You can receive that hope today. Key number two is the key of victory. And I'm not talking about the church, amen. I'm not talking about the building, Victory Assembly. I'm talking about the key of victory, amen. If there's any time to hold on to this one key, it's the key of victory. There are so many men and women that are so defeated. They wake up defeated. They go to bed defeated. They think already in defeat mode. God says, no, I've given you victory. I've given you victory. You see, we, we need to know when Jesus conquered the grave, he defined victory for every single person. He defined victory for me. He defined victory for you. He defined victory for your family. He defined victory for every single person that is breathing today. We are reminded in the scripture that no weapon formed against us will. That's victory. That's victory, church. We are reminded in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 4. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to what? Fight for you against your enemies and to give you the? Victory. Come on, I'm preaching the word right now. I'm not making some stuff up this morning. I want you to understand that the word has already been defined for you. The key of victory has already been laid out for you. Amen? Listen, church. I remember back in the day living in New York. Okay, now living in New York back in the day is not like living in New York today, amen? New York City is a different city where I grew up from. And I remember that you could trust a person when you tell them, you know what? I'm going to leave the key to my house underneath the mat. And you trust that that key is going to be there when you get back. You're going to trust that they're not going to make copies of that key. Amen? And that key of victory opens doors where you thought you were in defeat mode. When things come at you and you go, how in the world am I going to make it out of this? How in the world am I going to make this work? You pull out the key of victory. Amen. You can receive that key today. We have the key of healing, number three. You see, we don't have to accept sickness. Amen. We don't have to accept the report of the doctors. Amen. Listen, I'm not belittling doctors. I love doctors. I got doctor friends and so forth. And, and I believe God has given them the ability to be used by God in special ways. Amen. Amen. But my hope and my victory is not on my doctors, but on my Lord that conquered death. Amen. Amen. Listen. Prior to Jesus going on the cross, he bore stripes on his back. He was whipped and received 39 lashings for a healing. And Isaiah 53 verse 5 reminds us of those lashings for a healing. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Church, we have accepted the word of a doctor more than the word of, the, of God. Again, I'm not trying to belittle doctors. I'm not trying to belittle the medical field. I came out of the medical field and so forth. I believe in medicine. I believe in all, all that. But I believe in the God that gave the wisdom for those doctors. I believe in the one that gave the ability for those medical staff. I believe in the one that took the stripes on his back for my healing. I believe in the one that every time they whipped him, there was a healing. Every time they whipped him, there was another healing. Every time they whipped him, there was another healing. There's healing. It's a key of healing. Listen, church. We have to be more reliant on the word of God. This last key I want to talk about is the key of provision. The key of provision. He has given us these keys of provision. And what are the names of God? Check this out. What are the names of God? is that he's our provider. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, he's my provider. 
My provider is not the welfare system. The provider is not my spouse. The provider is not even my workplace. The provider is the one that holds the keys of provision. Amen. Listen to me. Here are three scriptures that show that God is our provider. Number one, Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 7. During these 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you and you have lacked nothing. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. And the same God who takes care of me will supply some of your needs. Oh, okay. All your needs. That's right. All your needs. Somebody say all. 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 Somebody say all. 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 You know what? There's a, there's a detergent called all, right? Is there still a detergent? I know back in the day there was. There's, okay. And the commercial, I'm showing my age, right? There was a commercial back in the day when all came out that it could conquer every st- stain. All stain. Can I just tell you right now that Jesus Christ, when he shed his blood, he washed all of our sins. All of our sins. And if he's able to wash all my sins, who can say that he can supply all my needs? Amen. Praise God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. So don't worry about these things. What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? Verse 33. Seek the kingdom of God. Above what? Above what? Above what? Man, there's a powerful little word that says all. That we kind of underestimate the power of that three-letter word. All. And live righteously, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he will give you everything you need. Everything you need. God is not a God that will see his children and not provide for them. He will not provide the way you may want it to be provided for. We have a mindset that this is the way God should do things. Amen. But he always provides. If you're praying for more money for your bills... God may say, you know what, let me give you a promotion. Let me give you a raise. Amen. God will supply all my needs. God is not a God that will see his children not provide for them. He sees lack and he's going to provide. Listen, there are a lot more of keys that we need to guard the enemy from that God has already entrusted us with. And one thing you need to know, that his name is called Master. Amen. He's got the master key. Amen. So you may have lost the key of hope. You may have lost the key of victory. You may have lost the key of provision. But he has the master key. And he's able to make a duplicate of that key. And say, you know what? You may have lost that key, but I'm restoring that key for you. Amen. Now, there's some people that lose his keys. I don't know what you're laughing at. I don't know. (laughs) And you go all over your house looking for your keys. You take your dog to get x-rays to see if the keys are in his stomach. All right? You'll check his stuff, you know, to see if the keys are in there. You know, you, 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 you have a tendency to lose your keys. Can I tell you what? The janitor never lost his keys because he keeps his keys on his side it may look bulky but he's always dependable you hear me that janitor is dependable because he holds the keys are you dependable today are you dependable today to hold the keys I want you to know this this morning as Jesus near death he said in John chapter 19 verse 30 It is finished. Those three words are powerful, church. Here's how powerful it is. His suffering in our place was completed. 
His soul and spirit went to the place of dead. He went to Abraham's side or the blessed side of Hades, if you will. And Jesus' suffering ended the moment he died. The payment of sin was paid. He then awaited the resurrection of his body and he returned to glory sitting at the right hand of the Father. You see, we don't need to feel hopeless this morning because he says it is finished. You have hope. Listen, we don't have to feel defeated because he said it is finished. You have the victory. We don't have to live in lack because he says it is finished. You can receive provision. That fight that started thousands of years ago with Satan. Can I just say that Jesus continues to fight for you. He goes before you. No matter what you're facing this morning, Jesus fights for you. I'm going to ask our youth to come as they do their presentation tonight.
this were young people portraying. And you say, well, that's just the youth. No. There will be things that you may find yourself as, as the woman here being attacked daily. And Jesus wants to come in and protect you. But can I say you have to be willing to be protected. You cannot keep going to those circumstances over and over again and become a cycle. God wants to break those things off of you. Not temporarily, but permanently. Amen. Permanently today. At that moment, Jesus comes and he surrounds his love and provides that hope and that victory. Provides everything that you need. Listen, church. I don't know where you're at with your walk with the Lord. You might be a guest here. You were invited by your neighbor. You are invited by a friend. You've been invited by a family member. You're saying, you know what? I need a hope. I need hope. I need victory. There's one key that I did not touch on, and that's the key of salvation. That's a big key. That key opens up everything else. Hope, victory, provision, and healing. It's receiving Jesus Christ as our Savior. With every head bowed, every eyes closed today, I just want to ask you a simple question. Does Jesus live in your heart this morning? Is Jesus a big part of your life today? Is he your Savior today? If you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and what I mean by that is you never confess with your own mouth, Jesus, I invite you into my life. You've never said, Jesus, I believe what happened on the cross. Jesus, I believe that you died for me and you took those lashings for me. And I believe that you're not in that grave any longer, but that grave is empty. You've never said, Jesus, I accept you. If you're here this morning, say, Pastor, I need Jesus, my Savior. Can you just raise your hand this morning? Just raise your hand and just put it back down. Anyone in this room today? You may be dealing with hopelessness. You feel like everything is coming down on you. But you never call upon Jesus. If that's you today, say, Pastor, I need Jesus in my life today. Just wave your hand at me and put it back down. Anyone in this room? I just want to give you an opportunity today. I don't want no one to walk out of this room saying, I wish I could have. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. He wants to hand those keys to you today. Would you stand to your feet this morning? I know people, and the reason I say that is, well, I don't want nobody to see my hand. We don't need to be ashamed of God. We should not be ashamed of Jesus Christ as Lord. We should not be ashamed of Jesus because he was not ashamed of you to go on that cross. He wasn't ashamed. He went willingly. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. He went willingly. With your head bowed, with your eyes closed, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Jesus, I love you. And Jesus, I want to make a declaration to you today. I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. I open up my life to you. And I invite you in. I believe you died. But three days later, you rose from that grave. Jesus, I love you. Amen. Listen, if you said that prayer... 
Can you let one of our staff know? You say, who's our staff? Well, let me just invite them up. Pastor Rodney, Pastor Patty, Pastor Loretta, Pastor Kim. This is your church staff. I want you to let us know before you leave here today saying, hey, I meant that prayer today. I meant that prayer today. And he is my Savior. That's the very first time. And if you did that, the next step is to get plugged in church. We would love for you to get plugged here at Victory. But get plugged in in a strong Bible-believing church. And then get baptized in water. Amen. Those are the next couple steps. We want to help you through that journey. Amen. And if you ask one of us here today, we will help you. We will help you today. We have a special prayer request this morning that just came to my attention. Pastor J.D. is not here, you notice. They rush baby Grace into the hospital, not breathing. So serious. So he left right away from church. So we want to stand the gap. Pastor J.D. and Mata. So can we pray? We just said that he is the God of healing. So, Father, we come before you. And, Father, we want to love on you today. Devil, you are a liar. Devil, you are a big, fat liar. And I know, my God, I know my Savior. And, Father, I pray that you walk into that room today and bring that peace in that hospital room right now. And, Father, I pray as you walk in, Lord God, I pray as you walk, Lord God, those keys are jingling right now. And, Lord God, they know that you're coming into that room. And, Lord God, there's declaration of healing, Lord God, over Grayson right now. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus right now. Father, I pray, Lord God, those lungs to come wide open. Father, I pray, Lord God, that he's able to take that breath, Lord God. Father, I pray for Mata right now, Lord God. God begins to fill that room today. Father, we declare victory right now. We declare victory, Lord God, over that hospital room right now. Lord God, that your glory, that your glory, that your glory, that your glory, that your glory will fill that room today. Father, we declare that today. Father, we love on you today. And Father, I pray right now, Lord God, that we hear that he took that breath Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Father, we declare today that you are the king. You are the king. You are the king. Oh, Jesus. Father, we know who we say you are. You are the wonderful miracle worker. You're our healer today. Father, we ask you all this in the mighty name of Jesus. We praise you. Can we sing that today? Can we sing that today? Can we declare that our king is still alive today? Amen. He's alive and well today. Come on, worship team. Let's just declare that today. Let's just put all our voices together as we declare that. Amen. Oh,
Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're just so thankful that you came today and joined us. If you're a guest, come on back next week. Amen. The presence of the Lord is in the house. Amen. We've got a lot to celebrate today, don't we? Let's go tell somebody now about Jesus. Amen. If you would, victory hashtag, um, put victory Easter hashtag in a picture. Um, that would be great. We also want to remind you that uh, we have growth tracks starting next Sunday at 9 o'clock downstairs. If you would like to sign up for the growth track, please go online to Victory Connect. And there's a place that you can uh, sign up there as well. Um, if I could have the ushers come, please. We're going to give of our, our okay as they go out. All righty. So there'll be two people standing at the back door there. Also, I wanted to remind you that tomorrow in uh, lieu of Easter, the offices will be closed tomorrow, okay? So well, I want to close out in prayer today and uh, just know that we love you. If no one's told you that they love you today, I love you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence in this house today. We thank you, Father God, for all that you are and all that you're doing, Father. We ask, Lord, that as we go out today, that, God, it would stop here. That, God, that you would give us divine appointments, Lord God. That you would put us in the path of people that need to hear about you. And, Father, I pray that you, that may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. And may his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And can everyone say amen? Amen. God bless you. We love you.